Chapter 3 of Mysteries and Creation, page 27, a book by Ogden Kraut. You can read this for free online at thekingdomofgodornothing.com. Click on Ogden Kraut and scroll down to the link. It will take you to the book where you can read it for free online. Chapter 3, The Birth of the Earth. Something out of nothing. How was our solar system created? Both scientists and religionists have expressed several different views. However, scientists have probably made more accurate conclusion than most of the modern religionists. The Prophet Joseph Smith explained why, quote, You have asked the learned doctors why they say the world was made out of nothing, and they will say, Doesn't the Bible say he created the world? And they may infer from the word create that it must have been made out of nothing. Now, the world... The word create came from the word baru, or baru, <laughs> I'm sorry, which does not mean to create out of nothing. It means to organize. The same as man would organize materials and build a ship. Hence, we infer that God had materials to organize the world out of chaos. Chaotic matter, which is element, and in which dwells all the glory, element had an existence from, from the time he had. See, it's because the elements are eternal, same as the intelligences that, that you know God comes from, that we all come from. The pure principle of element are principles which can never be destroyed. They may be organized and reorganized, but not destroyed. They had no beginning and can have no end. Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, page 350 through 352, Doctrinal History of the Church, volume 6, page 309. The Apostle Orson Pratt, who was both scientist and religionist, declared, quote, There is not a hint in all the Bible that God created this or any other world out of nothing. The work of creation was to take the materials that existed from all eternity that never were created or made out of nothing, to take these self-existent materials and organize them into a world. This is called creation. Orson Pratt, Journal of Discourses, Volume 16, page 315. The president, our president Brigham Young also agreed, quote, If I were a sectarian, I would say according to their philosophies, as I have heard many of them say hundreds of time, times, God created all things out of nothing. In six days he created the world out of nothing. You may assure, be assured that the Latter-day Saints do not believe any such thing. They believe God brought forth materials out of which he formed this little uh, terra firma upon which we roam. How long had this material been in existence? Forever and ever, in some shape, in some condition. We need not re refer to all those who were with God and who assisted, assisted him in this work. Journal of Discourses, Volume 8, page 232. Astronomers and cosmologists speculate and most agree that some super dense primordial matter exploded with incredible force, flinging these fragments into space, which eventually cooled and formed these huge bodies that we observe. This formation of planet, planets caused them to be born in a rather speedy fashion, which has been called the Big Bang Theory. Certainly this is more reasonable from information gathered than the idea that planets were formed by a gradual shifting of space, space sand, or that they were created out of nothing. Although most of the ministers of the world believe that the world ha was created out of nothing, scientists and reason itself dictate that it must be otherwise. Dr. John A. Witso, a noted LDS scientist, explains, quote, and the earth was made from materials found in the universe, which by the intelligent power of God were collected and organized into the earth. The earth was not made out of nothing, nor by the fiat of God, except as his will and word determined that the word should be undertaken. Rational Theology by Witso, page 49. The Apostle Parley Pratt also expressed similar views. 
intermingled with this space, there exists all the varieties of the elements, properties and things which intelligence takes cogniz cogniz cognizance, sorry, which elements or things take taken altogether compose what is called this universe. The elements of all these properties or things are eternal, uncreated, self-existing. Not one particle can be added to them by creative power. Neither can one particle be diminished or annihilated. Key to Theology, Orson Pratt, page 49 and 50. The expressions, or these expressions are ideologies that probably stem from the prophet Joseph Smith, who had previously taught, quote, in the translation, without form and without, and with, and void, it should be read empty and desolate. The word create should be formed or organized. Teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith, page 181. This hypothesis coincides with the old Hebrew ideas of creation. Creation, the bringing into existence of the world by the act of God. The etymological meaning of the verb, however, is to cut out and put into shape, and thus presupposes the use of material. Whatever may be the nature of the traditions in Genesis, and however strong may be the presumptions that they accept, that they suggest the existence of an original substance was, which was reshaped in accordance with that deity's purpose. Quote, For the genesis of everything, he, Philio, says, many things must combine, cause, ma material, instrument, purpose. God is the cause of the cosmos, while the four elements are the material. Nothing suggests that he regarded this material as other than uncreated. It was there when God arranged the new order of things. It was not matter but form that God praised as good and acknowledged thus as his creative work. Jewish Encyclopedia, volume 4, page 336. Hence the planets and suns were organized and brought together rather than suddenly popping into existence as many modern preachers would have us believe. So how were the elements actually brought together to form the Earth and other planets in our solar system? How was the Earth born? Big Bang Theory. It is reasonable to conclude that uh, then that the Earth and the Sun were wisely organized, planned, and brought into their orbits and attitudes by an all-wise creator. His methods of creating them, however, leaves some questions. The formation of this earth might have been a gathering of elements, or it could have been a fragment that came from a larger body of matter. Some astrologers contend that there was a super dense primordial piece of matter that exploded with incredible force, flinging matter which eventually cooled and formed many of the heavenly planets which we observe rotating around the sun. This formation or creation of the planet is reason to believe that they were born in a sudden expulsion which has come to be called the Big Bang Theory. The Earth was formed and placed in space through the fireworks of a supernova. Speaking of this fragment creation, B.H. Roberts wrote, quote, we're on page 31 of Mysteries of Creation, chapter 3. The prophet Joseph Smith is cr credited with having said that our planet was made up of the fragments of a planet which previously existed, which came, then came the mighty convulsions for, for some cause or other, and doubtless for some wise purpose, disrupted the planet and when, when from its fragment a new world. Our present planet was brought into existence. It was made, it was made the abode of man as described in the second account of the creation of Genesis, which begins by placing man upon the earth and then the inferior animals. Contributor, volume 10, page 265 and 266. So basically what happened is there was life on this planet. God wanted to use it for his purposes. So he sent a mighty convulsion or maybe like a huge meteorite, who knows, um, down and it killed off the plant life and the animal life and some of them remained but he was able to plant a garden on this planet and 
populate that garden with animals from other planets using their spaceships or however they do that. So, um, and yeah, the gods do have spaceships. <laughs> it's, uh, they have the technology that just, uh, it's um, mind boggling to us, but, uh, and then I'm not saying God is an alien like the greys or something, but guess what? God existed before this planet existed. So he's not from this planet. Just boggle your mind a little bit. Anyway, continuing. So the idea that our planet was born from another larger one was probably the result of some type of explosion. Seems to be the most logical, logical and accepted explanation among the LDS authorities. It wasn't. This planet existed in this form um, and had already been populated with life and was just in reserve until it was needed. And then um, Michael and Jehovah made sure that there was uh, a uh, wiping out uh, of the intelligent, or not intelligent, but the animal life on this planet. And they planted the animals and the plants and those things that they wanted to be on this planet for themselves. Because Michael would come down and inhabit this world, and this world would be his children's world, right? So, anyway, so the Earth is very old, and the dinosaur bones on it are all real, and all of that fun stuff, but and there may have been civilizations on this Earth before, but uh, this Earth was uh, organized and created so that it could populate, be populated by the sons of Adam, the sons and daughters of Adam. Anyway, the time, place, and reason. The prophet's brother, William Smith, wrote to W.W. Phelps and mentioned that our part of the solar system was determined to have a, part, a particular age as established by Abraham and Joseph in, in Egypt. The prophet translated something that established this age, quote, and that eternity, agreeable to the records found in the catacombs of Egypt, has been going on in this system, not in this world, almost 2,555 million years. Times and Seasons, Volume 5, page 758. Thus, the age of the solar system was determined anciently to be 2.5 billion years old. Some of the leading scientists of, t uh, of today, coincidentally, have made similar observations of up to 4 billion years. This determination is based upon its organization, organization, not its origin. Because the elements of this earth are eternal in nature, and therefore did not have a beginning. As previously mentioned, something cannot be created out of nothing. Page 32 of Mysteries of Creation, Chapter 3. Orson Pratt made the observation that when I speak of the beginning, I have reference to the beginning of the earth in its present organization. I do not have reference to the beginning of duration, for it had no beginning. Journal of Discourses, Volume 21, page 2, or I'm sorry, page 323. And again, as the elements of of all the world were not created, but are eternal, and as they have always been the tabernacle and dwelling place of God, they must have eternally been acted upon by His Spirit. Consequently, they must have passed through an endless series of operations without beginning. Instead of seeking to trace our evidence as a beginning to the elements, we shall at once pronounce them eternal. The seer. And I think that was Orson Pratt that wrote that as well. Page uh, 248 and to, uh, 249. B.H. Roberts gave some additional information on the time and method involved in the Earth's creation. Quote, The theory set forth in this paper that before Adam was placed upon this Earth to people it with his offspring, the matter of which it is composed existed in another planet. I don't like how they say that because this planet didn't just get taken from another planet and molded. It has existed for a very long time. And there was a creation on this planet before the creation was wiped out by the gods that decided to use this planet for themselves. Anyway, before they decided to terraform it or whatever it is they decided to do. Anyway, 
the manner of which it is composed existed in another planet, by which by some mighty con, uh, con, convulsions was broken up and its ruin was formed our present earth. Our at once, see they get all this from Joseph Smith, but they don't understand what he saw, I, I guess, I don't know. Anyway, at once, at once affords a meaning of harmonizing those facts established by the researches of man and the facts of revelation. If scientists shall claim that myriads of years or centuries must have been necessary to form the earth's crust, it may be allowed be allowed by the believers in Revelation that there is nothing that would contradict that idea in the revelations of God on the subject. Contributor, volume 10, page 266. And I think the contributor was an old church magazine from way back in the day. So anyway, page 33 of Mysteries of Creation by Ogden Kraut. Brigham Young also added some insight as to the place of this earth's creation when he said quote when the earth was framed and brought into existence and man was placed upon it it was near the throne of our father in heaven but when men fell the earth fell into space and took up its abode in this planetary system and the sun became our light this is the glory of earth this is the glory the earth came from and when it is glorified, it will return again to the presence of the Father, and it will dwell there. And these intelligent beings that I am looking at, if they will be worthy of it, will dwell upon this earth. We shall not be idle. We shall not go on from one step to another, reaching forth into the eternities until we become like the gods, and shall be able to frame for ourselves by the behest and command of the Almighty all those who are counted worthy to be exalted and become gods, even the sons of God, will go forth and have earths and worlds like those who framed this and millions and on millions of others. Journal of Discourses, volume 17, page 143. And John Taylor agreed when he said the earth, quote, had fled and fallen from where it was organized near the planet Kolob. The Mormon, August 29, 1857. See, these guys were in the school of the prophets and they were being taught by the prophet Joseph Smith things that he knew. Now, whether they got revelation on it, I don't know. But these things were known by the prophet Joseph Smith. It was things that weren't openly discussed in the church until they were able to handle it. But that's, that's how John Taylor, Brigham Young, and these guys got this information. That's why it's good to go back and see what they actually said. Anyway, continuing. Because you, you get a lot of bleed through from through them about what they were taught by the prophet Joseph Smith. Of course, you get a lot of speculation from them too. So instead of just trusting what their words are, you study it out and you get revelation for yourself about the subject. If you lack wisdom, ask God and he will give it to you, making you a prophet. Because God wants all his children to be prophets. Continuing the reading. And as to why the earth was created, one conscious and concise answer is given by Nephi in the Book of Mormon. When he said, quote, The Lord hath created the earth that it should be inhabited, and he hath created his children that they should possess it. 1 Nephi chapter 17 verse 36. So by now we should have a better understanding of how, when, and where, and why this earth was created. Now the question arises, who created it? Page 34 of Mysteries of Creation by Ogden Crown. And they went down at the beginning, and they, that is the gods, organized and formed the heavens and the earth. Abraham chapter 4 verse 1. Continuing on chapter 4 who is the creator. So I just wanted to say before I go into that new video, um, the gods created the earth. We know this by scripture. We also know in the temple endowment that the Elohim were uh, sent Yehovah and Michael to create this earth. And when they got here, my, uh, Yehovah said, Michael, go and create the earth. And Michael said, it will be done. And guess who did it? 
it was Michael. He's the organizer and creator of this earth. Joseph Smith said that the creator, uh, God the creator is God the Father. Michael is God the Father. It's in scripture and it's in your temple endowments. And why they have gone away from this in the church, because it was taught from the pulpit, it was it was doctrine, now they want to say it was just a theory. And it is not a theory. And even the Jews, the ancient, uh, the ancient Jews that keep the old traditions know that Adam is the ancient of days and that the ancient of days is the Father or God. Anyway, I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.